Today, I want to talk to you about six ways that you can make your Chapter 13 bankruptcy payments if you've got a case pending in Birmingham, Alabama. Hi, I'm Scott Allen, I'm a consumer bankruptcy attorney in Alabama. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. I would ask that you subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. What prompted me to shoot this video is I was going through and updating some information that we provide to our clients. And this video was really initially for our clients. And I thought I would share it for you guys and maybe you may get some value out of it. But anyway, when you're in a chapter 13 bankruptcy case, you've got to make your bankruptcy payments every 30 days. And if it's not being deducted from your paycheck, you need to know how to make your payments direct. The chapter 13 trustee in Birmingham is Brad Caraway, And on his website, he lists all the different ways that you can make payments. The way I came up with this information or this list, I went to his website. And then also there is a way that to a local bank that you can make payments direct to the bank. And I called the bank to get some tips from them to better assist on the process. One more thing I want to go over is that again, your bankruptcy payments are due every 30 days. And sometimes in the past we have said, don't forget to make your payments before your first court date. Well, that can sometimes be a little tricky because I think we probably said that to a client on a case we recently filed because when we had court just recently, she had not made her bankruptcy payment. She had got two court notices in the mail, one for the bankruptcy 341 meeting and the second for the confirmation hearing. And in her mind, she said, I don't have to make my payments if I go to court. Which court date? So let's be clear here that your payments are due within the first 30 days. Just because you get multiple court notices, your first court hearing is usually within 30 days and it's the 341 meeting. That's really what I was talking about. So I'm not going to use that language anymore to avoid confusion. Let's jump right in. The first payment method is that you can have it deducted from your paycheck and that's called an income withholding order or a wage deduction order. And it normally takes several weeks, three to four weeks before these things become active. Because when you file a bankruptcy case, the trustee's office gets notice of your case. They then send notice of the wage deduction order to your employer. Your employer has to process it in payroll. And then they send the money back to the trustee's office. So it can take some time, but it's your obligation to make sure that you make those payments direct until that wage deduction order takes into effect. Now, here's a little tip. We have very, very few times, but there has in the past been a couple of occasions where an employer would not send in the money or they were delayed in sending in the money. And so I always ask my clients to make sure you hold on to your paycheck stubs and file them away because that's proof that you made your payment. And if there's ever a dispute whether or not you made your payments, you know, bring me or bring your lawyer, whoever's representing you in the case, those pay stubs, that's proof that you made your payments and that we can or whoever your lawyer is can track down to see what's really going on. So that's the first payment method is an income withholding order. The second way that you can make a payment is through court compass. It's an electronic way that you can go in online and put your bankruptcy case number. And I think it asks for your name and you can go in and schedule a payment through their website. The third method is TFF bill pay. It's a way that you go in and you, I think you actually create an account on their website and you can set up automatic continuing payments. If you want to, you can probably, I haven't gone past the landing page, but you can probably set up a single payment. I'm not sure. I think I know at court compass, you can set up a single payment. I'll put the links in the description below to both of these places. So you can go and check it out yourself. The fourth method is you can go to any of the, I think there's 8,000 is how they advertised it, 8,000 MoneyGram locations. At MoneyGram, I guess they have a partnership with TFF's bill pay that you can make your payments through. So that's the fourth method. The fifth method is you can just mail a good old check and it can be a personal check, a cashier's check, or a money order directly to a P.O. box that the trustee uses. Now, it is in Mississippi, so don't get confused. His local office is in Birmingham, but he has a P.O. box or a lot box that you mail your payments to in Mississippi that handles the payments and the processing that route. So the thing to remember on that is don't send cash and make sure you put your unique case number on your payment method so you get credit for the payment. There is a $10 return check charge if that personal check bounces. 
there is a way and there is another method and which is the fastest way if you're in a bind and you need to make a payment now before like court tomorrow or court in a couple of days and you're trying to get it to post fast is that you can go to Renaissance Bank. I've got the address here on this slide or this web page here, the location that's closest to the courthouse. You can pay at actually any of their locations. They take cash. They also accept cash advances from a debit card, which was pretty unique. I didn't know it, but it's like an ATM withdrawal. And I actually called Renaissance Bank and kind of talked to a service rep a couple of days ago about this to confirm. She said that all you had to have was two forms of identification. So you need a driver's license or state issued ID along with a social security card, insurance card, or a birth certificate. And then they can take that card, that debit card, and take a cash advance out. It's like an ATM withdrawal. A tip from her was she says, make sure your clients know that the cash advance limit to ensure their payments not declined if they come in. So a Renaissance Bank, to kind of recap, you can pay by cash, check, or money order, or I guess cashier's check at the local bank, or the cash advance on your debit card. Those are the six different ways that you can make your chapter 13 payments. I hope this information is helpful. If you're a client of ours and you have some questions about this, of course, pick up the phone, give me a call, shoot me an email, be glad to clarify. We'll put all the local descriptions below to help out and I'll put the trustees website information down in the description below as well. I hope you have a great day. I hope this information was helpful. Look out for our next video. I'm gonna put some content out about how to make your chapter 13 bankruptcy payments. If you've got a case pending in Tuscaloosa, and your trustee is uh, David Cottingham.